Hi, boys and girls. I hope you are having a happy day. As you know, this week we are learning about different environments or habitats that animals live in and what they need in those environments to keep them safe, help them grow, and um, go on to have families of their own. So I have another story today. I know you've already listened to Just Ducks, most of you. And this is called Hip Pocket Pop. And it is about a toad, a frog. And it is written by Sandra Markle and illustrated by Alan Marks. And even though these are not real photographs, this is a nonfiction book. Everything that I'm going to read to you is our true facts about Hip Pocket Papa. Okay, and I want to show you before I start, these kind of frogs are very tiny. This is how big a real hip pocket frog is. Just like that. Okay, so very little, very hard to see in their environments. Yeah, I'm gonna put my glasses on for this story. A male, which is the boy, the dad, a male hip pocket frog ducks beneath a mushroom cap. It's a tiny space, and there he is. But since he's no bigger than a thumbnail, he's no bigger than my fingernail, he fits with room to spare. Settling in there, he croaks in a creaky voice. Eep, 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 eep. Nearby, the mom hip pocket frog hears her mate and crawls away to find a meal. For the past eight days and nights, this male and female, or the boy and girl, have guarded this bit of forest floor together. And now the male looks with his golden eyes on one small spot on a leaf. There, beneath a covering of orange and brown leaves, is a glob or a pile of about 12 eggs. Little tiny ones, and those are the baby hip pocket frogs right here. In December, in a very dry summer for Australia, it's rainforest. So these frogs live way across the world in Australia. And in December and in Australia, there's no snow. As the sun go, the sky goes from dark to dim. A warm wind blows away in the early morning mist and turns a squishy leaf surface crispy. But beneath the leaf blanket, that glob of jelly and egg stays wet the way the eggs need to be for oxygen to slip through to help those baby tadpoles grow. The air for them to breathe. Suddenly, a centipede, not much bigger than a piece of rice, even though it looks bigger in this book, it's really about as big as a piece of rice, arrives on many legs, waving its antenna as it searches for food. If it crawls down in underneath the leaves, it will likely find and eat the frog's eggs. Snap! The male hip pocket frog's long tongue flicks out, snags the centipede and pulls it into his mouth. He defends his baby frogs by swallowing this enemy that's even tinier than he is. Three more days go by as the male and female hip pocket frogs take turns hunting, guarding, and waiting. Finally, the eggs hatch. And you can see they don't look like the little frog. These are called tadpoles. The jelly surrounding them turns to liquid and 12 teeny tiny tadpoles 
swimming up and out onto the forest floor. Her job done, the mom frog crawls away, but the dad stays. He has an even bigger job to do. He croaks and wades into his wiggling tadpole babies, sits down and stays still. Hour after hour, he waits while the tadpoles wiggle up his back legs and into the hidden pockets on his hips. And that's why he's called a hip pocket frog. He has pockets on his hips. Each tadpole will get all the energy it needs to grow from it by being inside the dad's pockets. But the young father needs to keep eating. So finding nothing on the forest floor, he burrows into the leaves until he finds tiny crickets. Here he is way down here. Then he eats till his tummy is full. The male stays buried for two nights and two in a day. And that keeps himself, him safe from hunters who are flying overhead like a, an owl or a young brown snake and a wolf spider. Once the hip pocket dad could have stayed for weeks and caught all the prey that he needed, all the food that he needed, but now there's not very much food left. There hasn't been very much rain for a long time, so there aren't a lot of um, things for the frog to eat. So the young father must return to the forest floor to find his next meal. And this is the wolf spider way right over here. He hunts in the morning <clears throat> and late at night when the forest floor is damp. And the fewer hunters that might eat him are out on the prowl. He spends the rest of the time hiding in a shadowy nooks and spaces. He needs to stay safe and keep his skin wet. Like fish, the tadpoles inside his pockets have gills and they need to be wet to eat. They need to be wet to breathe, sorry. Some days he dines on insect eggs the size of tiny seeds. And other days he snaps up little prey like mites and minges, springtails, and wood lice. Once he comes across a fern and crawling inside the leaves, he finds a tiny pool of water. Then clinging to a hiding place among the leaves, he waits. And when a swarm of mingies, you can see those little tiny bugs, attracted by the water buzzes around him, he gulps down as many as he can catch. One late afternoon, a dusky uh, antichinus surprises him running fast across the forest floor with its jaws wide open. But another animal from the rock pounces on this hunter and catches it, catches his own meal, rescuing the frog. So this big animal is going to get this one and that will save the frog from being eaten by this one. Another time, a black and white bird searching with big yellow eyes, sees the male hip pocket frog and plunges from the tree branch. Although he really hops, the young father leaps in the nick of time to dive under a log and escape this hunter. Whew, pretty dangerous for these little frogs. For nearly 30 days, the young father hunts for food and watches for other hunters. Safe and wet in the pouches on his hips, the 12 teeny tiny tadpoles grow bigger. When the tadpoles squirm, his hips seem to shimmer. So they're right in here on both sides. By January, the forest is usually rainy, but this year there's not a lot of rain. When the winds shake the high branches, um, dry leaves fall down instead of water. And 
over and through this crunchy bunch of leaves, the male hip pocket frog crawls. Here he is right here. Kind of blends in with the leaves, doesn't he? At last he finds what he's been looking for. A creek bank where the ground is still squishy wet and the leaves are teeming with tiny prey. It's the perfect new home. And he's arrived just in time. Inside his hip pockets, the tadpoles are changing into froglets. And you can see one coming out right there. Bumps become legs and fish-like tails shrink to stubs. Big eyes develop and big mouths with long tongues like the dad. The froglets are almost ready to find food for themselves. Finally, their gills become lungs and one by one, each tiny froglet pops out of the male's hip pockets and takes its first breath. Pretty cool. Age here. Their father stays still, watching over his babies one last time. And while he waits, the 12 little froglets, here's some over here, hop off and crawl away. The tadpoles that grew up inside his pockets are ready to be on their own. And that is the end of my story of the hip pocket papa. So I want you to think about what type of environment or habitat this hip pocket frog had to live in to keep his babies safe and so that he had food and he could also stay safe. So your teacher may be asking you to write about the hip pocket papa, just like I asked my class to write about the environment for the mallet ducks. So enjoy the rest of your day, boys and girls. Bye.